Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. My name's Nick, I'm an architect in Australia and today we're gonna to run through 10 tips to create the best portfolio possible. Now, portfolios seem like a big, huge and important thing and a be all and end all, but as long as you're thoughtful, focus on communicating your work and skills and taking note from some of these tips, I'm sure what you create will end up being awesome. Now let's dive straight in. The first tip is don't neglect the cover page. This is one of, if not the most important parts of your folio. They might say don't judge a book by the cover, but this is exactly what will happen when someone looks at your folio. The cover page is what's separating your portfolio from ending up in the bin or ending up in the shortlist pile. It's important that you make sure your cover page is interesting. Put a captivating, highly detailed image or render here that will make the reader want to open your portfolio and find out more. Don't just put some small, boring little plan drawing on the page, that isn't gonna work. The other thing you can do is use intrigue. Put something mysterious or unconventional on the cover. Something that will make people wanna open your portfolio and find out what this thing is on the cover. Don't be afraid of going big or going really small. This method, in my opinion, is high risk, high reward. If you pull it off, you're almost guaranteed the person to open up your portfolio and give you a chance. Now the second tip is don't get carried away with the graphic design and the layout. So many times have I seen portfolios where the graphic design and the layout is clearly the focus. There's graphics everywhere, there's colors, fonts, text crammed in, there's borders, there's lines, there's bold. It's just too much. The focus should be on your work, not on the graphic design. You absolutely do not want heaps of graphic elements, colors, backgrounds, highlights, or anything like that distracting you from your actual work. If graphic design or layouts aren't your strong point, don't be afraid to go simple. Just a few images per page on a plain white background with some well thought out, well laid out text. There's nothing wrong with simple. The focus is on the images and drawings, not the layouts. Now the third tip is don't cram your content in. You don't want every single image of every single project you've ever worked on in your portfolio. You want to choose only the best content. It's okay to have one or two images per page. Let the reader experience each image without having to look through a thousand other images first. There's no point putting something in if you're unsure about it. It's okay to have two or three images per project as long as they're really good. So this also includes giving your workspace to breathe. White space is okay. Don't be afraid of blank spaces. You don't need to cram it all in. Let your images breathe. This lets the reader focus clearly on each image or drawing and really get a sense of being able to move their eye around the page and look at what it is. The more distraction there is on the page, the less someone will actually look at your work. Make it short. You don't need to include every single project you've ever worked on. Just choose to include your best, most recent, or most demonstrative of your skills. I honestly think 10 to 15 pages is a sweet spot. If you send a 40 page portfolio, chances are the person looking won't have time and won't be bothered to look through your portfolio in detail. So what they'll do is quickly flick through, barely look at anything. Chances are they've gotten bored or tired of looking at your huge document. Just don't do it. Tip number five, you want to curate your portfolio. A really smart way of using your portfolio is to make one large master portfolio. Do a spread of pages for all of your most recent and best projects. We're not gonna include them in your final portfolio, but what you can do is use this master portfolio as a basis. So when you're applying for a job, curate the projects that you want to include from this master portfolio that match the firm you're applying for. So perhaps if you're working for a small residential office, you might look at just including small residential projects. So you select those projects out of your master portfolio, take them out into their own file, change the page numbers and the contents page, and you've got yourself a curated folio ready to go. This is a good way of working if you're going through a phase of applying for a few jobs at once. Now the next tip is include your personality. Your portfolio isn't just some faceless design document. You need to include some of your personal touch. It could be as simple as colors or the graphic design might be particularly representative of your personal style. You might include some sketches if you're really good at sketching. What about watercolors? You might put some pictures of your personal projects. Maybe you make furniture on the side or you're a really good photographer or you make pottery. Employers are always interested to know what kind of person you are, especially smaller offices. In smaller offices, your personality and fit for the office is almost more important than your skills. And that's what they're gonna be looking for.
This tip is random and super specific. One of my mentors told me this and it's always stuck in my head. If you're including a bio page, which I highly recommend you do, do not put those little progress bars, those little circles that represent how good you are at a program out of 100. It's easy just to put a list of the programs you're familiar with and then you're not necessarily selling yourself short by saying you're only 20% proficient at Rhino. And a secret tip for this, employers love to hear, just include that you're a fast learner and good with new programs. And just make it really obvious that you can learn new new systems and skills really quickly and that's all they want to see. You don't want to put too much text. The chances of an employer reading a huge block of text about your thesis project is slim to zero. It's just not happening. Keep it short. Chances are big blocks of text will only ever be read if you're really, really shortlisted and going in for an interview. And at that stage anyway, you're probably going to have to either talk to a project in your portfolio during your interview, or you're going to have to be able to speak to work in person. So there's no need to have it in text. You obviously need to be familiar with the work included in your portfolio, but in my opinion, text just distracts from your work and often makes clunky layouts. So this tip isn't necessarily about your portfolio itself, it's more about the delivery. When you're sending your portfolio to a potential employer, especially if it's unsolicited and not in response to a specific job ad, what you want to do is make sure the subject line and message in the email are interesting and personalised. Don't just make it something generic. And definitely don't just say to whom it may concern or to director or director of. Find out a specific person in the office to direct it to and bonus points if you can find out their personal email to CC in. Now, some of the ways you can do this is check on LinkedIn, check on Instagram, ask your friends, look through the office website. I mean, it's just common courtesy and it's a really easy way to stop your portfolio getting thrown in the bin. And for the final tip, file size. This might seem obvious, but keep your file under 20 megabytes. Compress that PDF, save it as a reduced file size using Adobe or use a free online PDF reducer. If your file's too big, it's just gonna bounce or it's gonna be marked as spam or not even opened at all because it's too big and too slow to load. Okay, so that's it for these 10 tips. And don't forget to subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. I'm starting to transition into some more content. Check it out and subscribe. Happy designing and have a great day.